The demons knew him. And whenever he came, wherever he came, he broke their chains, he destroyed their yoke. That same Jesus is here tonight. It will do wonders in your life. Wonders of salvation. Wonders of healing. Wonders of deliverance. Tonight is your night. Where are you there? Let me see you. Look at me as I look at you. Miracle is coming your way. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. The God that says, I am God, I change not. The Jesus of salvation, of healing, of deliverance, of miracles, of power, manifestation. Lord, we come trusting you tonight that what you did before you are going to do here. And for those online, you're going to manifest your power, your goodness, and your glory. And we know that the same power that flowed days gone by will flow into the lives of everyone here tonight in Jesus' name. The Jesus that can never fail. The Jesus that cannot be defeated. The Jesus that has all power on earth and in heaven. We come tonight going to experience that same power from that same Jesus. Manifestation tonight. Great operation of power here tonight. Fulfill your word. Fulfill your will. Do what only you can do in every life. We thank you because we know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, once again, we're bringing the same Jesus, the Prince of Peace. The same Jesus, our Savior. The same Jesus, our Healer. The same Jesus, our Deliverer. And how did he become Savior, Healer, Deliverer, Redeemer? He had to pay the price that no other person could pay. He had to make a sacrifice that no other man, no other person on earth could make. He had to satisfy the demands of the Heavenly Father that nobody else could do. Uh, that, that's what I'm talking about tonight. The price he paid. The sacrifice that he made. And the satisfaction of the Heavenly Father that became real. The price he paid, the sacrifice he made. If, if you are going to buy something, once you pay the price, you only, come, you only need to come and collect. And nobody can disturb you. Nobody can hinder you. Nobody can deny you. The price is paid. Christ has paid the price. The price for your salvation. Christ has paid the price. The price for your healing. 
Christ has paid the price. The price for your deliverance. Christ has paid the price. The price for your redemption. When you pay the price for something. And when you come to collect what has been paid for. Nobody can deny you. And tonight, God will not deny you. Christ who paid the price will not deny you. The Holy Spirit is available and is going to say, come, come, this is yours. It will not deny you. Even Satan cannot deny you. The price crushed the power of Satan. The price destroyed all the powers of all demons. And tonight, no man can deny you. The price is paid. The sacrifice is made. The fulfillment, satisfaction of the demand of God is already put in place. And because of that, salvation is just tonight. You come, you ask, you receive. You come, you demand, it is given unto to you. I'm talking to you tonight on the ultimate sacrificial prize for our peace. Ultimate, final, complete, nothing left undone. The ultimate sacrificial prize for our peace. Peace. Let's look at the Bible. I'm reading to you from the epistle of Paul to the Ephesians. And I'm reading from chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 12. Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 12. It says, at that time, what ye were without Christ. It's taking us back to the history of your life. When you came out of Adam and Eve. It's taking us to the history of your life. When you were born as an offspring of Adam. It said at that time. In your natural cell. At that time. In your natural strength and habit at that time before you met the Lord Jesus the Prince of Peace at that time ye were without Christ being alias foreigners from the commonwealth of Israel you had no covenant of promise covenant of peace, covenant of protection, covenant of healing, at that time, before you met the Lord, it says you are foreigners, you are aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. He said that you were strangers to the commonwealth than to the covenant of promise. Having no hope and without God in the world. The world of demons, you had no hope. The world of the devil, where he controls people, you had no hope, no hell. The world of darkness, no hope, no hell. At that time. And then in verse 13, he says, but now, but now, a change is happening to you tonight. I didn't hear your amen. But 
now because the Christ of Calvary the Christ that bore the cross the Christ that came to cancel all your condemnation that same Christ that same Jesus now he has come and you have encounter with him. And you have relationship with him. Then we change from at that time to at this time. At this time, but now. In Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far away, Far off, he has made you to come near by the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. The price for our redemption. The blood of Christ. The sacrifice for our redemption. The blood of Christ that took away your death and took away your penalty. And now you are in God, in Christ, because of that sacrifice and because of that price he paid for you. It says in verse 14, it says, For he is our peace, the source of our peace, the origin of our peace, the proof producer of our peace, and the unchanging channel of our peace. Because he made the sacrifice, and he alone, he alone did that ultimate, final, complete, acceptable thing. He is now our peace, who has made both one. And has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. He says, having abolished in his flesh because of his sacrifice, because of his flesh that was broken for us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace. Making peace. He comes to make peace with us. And he comes to make peace for us. And he is the one that is our Prince of Peace. And that peace is yours today. I wanted an amen there. It says in verse 16, that, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereof. And he came and preached peace. And he came and provided peace. And he came and brought peace. And he came and brought peace total in your heart, in your life, in your mind, in your home, around you. He is now your Prince of Peace, my Prince of Peace, our Prince of Peace. He came and brought peace to you. Oh, I'm far off the Gentiles. Who are far off in Africa, who are far off in Asia, who are far off in all the continents of the world. 
And then he says, now unto them that were night. He also preached to the Jews. Now that peace is available for us today. Because he proclaimed it. Because he provided it. And he says, for through him we both have access by one and then by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers, ye are no more foreigners, ye are no more aliens, but fellow citizens with the saints and of all of the household of God. Now the peace is available for you. Now the salvation is available for you. Now the forgiveness is available for you. Now all the provision of heaven all the provision of God now available for you, for me, for one and all. Tonight, no denial. As you come, you receive. As you come, you are transformed. As you come, the peace of God comes to reign in your heart, in your life. And everything that brings trouble, 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 the Lord will take everything away. Tonight, all your troubles are gone. Tonight, all my troubles are gone. Christ will make it possible in your life in Jesus' name. You know, I always climb the ladder one, two, three. And when I reach three, I reach the step of the ladder that everything becomes possible. Tonight, number one, number two, number three, one alienation from peace and peacefulness without Christ. Alienation, separation, demarcation between you and peace because you don't have Christ. Whatever else you have, power, position, authority, skill, ability, and interaction and connection with the world. Whatever you have, without Christ, you are alienated and separated, distanced from the peace that will make you live a peaceful life. Number one, alienation from peace and peacefulness without Christ. Number two, I told you he came to pay the price. And the price is the atonement. Number two, atonement by the price and pain of his cross. Atonement. He reconciles us with God. He takes the yoke of sin away. He breaks all the things that separated us from God. Atonement by the price and the pain of his cross. And then number three, after that atonement, and we're connected with God. After that atonement, and we're reconciled with God. After that atonement, and the wall of partition separation between you and God is broken down. After that atonement, and you come in faith, and you come trusting the Lord, and you come relying on what Christ has done, 
Then we have number three, abundance of peace through penitence and conversion. Peace abundant. Peace overflowing. Peace in every area of your life. Because you are penitent, because you repent. And because you come to the Lord in true conversion. That now we have abundance of peace through that penitence and conversion. Look at number one there. Number one is alienation, separation, demarcation from peace and peacefulness without Christ. I want you to remember the first verse I read to you. You say, I don't remember that now. But I'll tell you. It's in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. It said that at that time, at that time, maybe yesterday, at that time, maybe last week in your life, at that time, your past life, your past situation, your past history, that at that time, when you were alienated and separated from the peace of God, because we need a peace, that at that time ye were without Christ, without Christ, without the Savior, without Christ, without the healer, without Christ, without the helper, without Christ, without the heavenly deliverance. That at that time, ye were without Christ. And then it says, being aliens and foreigners and strangers from the commonwealth of Israel. And that we were strangers and were foreigners to the covenant of so promise. Having no hope. Having no help. Having no peace of mind, having no power from God, having no divine ability, you are like straw. Your backbone of conviction, like straw. And your decision, your determination, like straw. You couldn't stand. You had no Christ, no hope, no hell, no stamina, no steadfastness, no conviction. You couldn't maintain any determination. Any resolution you took could not have any standing effect. Without Christ, without hope and without God in the world. And the problems in the world are greater than you can solve by yourself. And because you were separated, alienated from God, you didn't have God, and the problems you had that only God could solve, you couldn't solve them without God in the world. That was the story of everybody. That was the story of every man and every woman. We were weak in the flesh. We were weak in the fight against evil. We were weak. We had no strength. We had no divine ability. And we failed and failed and failed and failed. That's why we're told in Romans chapter 3. And he tells us, and the way of peace they have not known. We wanted peace, but we didn't find the way to peace. 
And he will say, I'll not fight anymore. I'll not be angry anymore. I'll not be violent anymore. We had the desire, the desire to be peaceful. But the way to get that done, we could not find. And so, even though we said, I will not, yes, that's exactly what we did. Tomorrow, when the tempter comes and knocks at my door, I will look at him, I will look at her, eyeball to eyeball, and say, No. You cannot do that without Christ, without God. And so the tempter came, and uh, you, you forgot all your resolution and all your determination because without Christ, without God, we cannot have that backbone, we cannot have that strength, and we cannot have the victory over the enemy. He says they could not find the way of peace. There is no fear of God before their eyes. All they can remember is themselves. If I do that, I'll get money. What kind of money? If I do that, I'll get my way through. What kind of way? If I do that, I will overcome them. Who are the them? Because we have no fear of God. We don't have any thought of God. We don't have any inclination or leaning towards God. Therefore, we said and we did things that were not approved of God. Because we didn't have Christ and we didn't have God. And then it says, now we know that what things soever the law says, he says to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped. Every mouth may be stopped. And all the world may become guilty before God. In fact, it says in verse 23 there, it says, For all, all, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody trying, all have sinned. Everybody making decision, but all have sinned. Everybody making resolution, but all have sinned. Everybody promising themselves, I will not, I will not, but all have seen. Everybody say, I love peace, I want peace, I'll make peace, I'll be a peacemaker, but all have seen. If we're without Christ and without God, we'll be without a peace, we'll be without the divine ability to make true everything we're promising ourselves. But now in verse 24, it says, being justified freely by his grace. Being justified, forgiven by his grace. Being justified, set free from all the chains of our sin by grace. Being justified, and now we come to the just God. He smiles at us because our sins are taken away by grace. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. He paid the price. He made a sacrifice. He fulfilled the law's demand. And because of that, now we're justified, now we're forgiven, now we're set free. 
And as you come tonight, you are coming to Christ tonight. I said you are coming to Christ tonight. What are you? I said, what are you? He will help you tonight. He will save you tonight. He will forgive you tonight. All those things at that time, he will change and turn to at this time. The confusion in your heart will go away. The condemnation in your heart will go away. The conflict in your heart will vanish away. And all the, con all the conflict and everything, the commotion, it's like there are two personalities fighting inside you. One personality, good. The other personality, evil. And evil is dragging you here. Another mind is dragging you here. All that contradiction in your heart will vanish away tonight. Because the Lord is going to have mercy on you. And by the price that Jesus paid, by the sacrifice of Christ at Calvary, and by the fulfillment of the demand of the Almighty God on your behalf, the Lord will settle everything tonight. And he tells us in verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission, for the removal, for the forgiveness, for the cleansing of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. You are without Christ. That's the reason for all the problems in your life. Now you come into Christ. And that is the source of all the solution of every problem in your life. The Lord will do it tonight. For you. For me. For me. He'll do it tonight in Jesus' name. I come to point number two now. Atonement by the price and the pain of the cross. Nobody could have bought, borne that pain. The pain of the broken law. The pain of defiance and disobedience. The pain of the punishment for our sin. The pain to suffer on earth and in eternity in hell forever and ever. Even that rich man that spoke to Abraham in, from hell, he couldn't bear the pain. The pain and the torment. But Jesus has borne that for you and for me. And so, as you come now at this time, and you make the connection with God through Christ, the price and the pain of the cross at Calvary. Everything that he bought for you, it will become a reality tonight in Jesus' name. There are people that have heard about the cross, about his pain, about his sorrow, about the burden that he bore on the cross of Calvary. 
some people even hang the chain of the cross on their neck. But it's all ornament. They do not understand and they do not plug in to the result of that pain of Christ. That's why Lamentation chapter 1 verse 12 Lamentation chapter 1 verse 12 says, is it nothing to you, the pain of Christ? Is it nothing to you, the pain on the cross? Is it nothing to you, the pain of condemnation that he took away for you? Is it nothing to you? The pain of the suffering for your sin. Is it not is it nothing to you? They, we go to church. We sing in church. We hear sermons in church. And yet we do not consider the pain of Christ at Calvary. We try to give some money. Of course, you know, we're not giving the money to God. We're giving the money to run the administration of a local assembly. That's not a big deal. We, we pay tax in our country. We give money and we have to because of constructing the road and because we are going to, you know, sell in the market, because we do this, that's no big deal. We pay tax in the country and then we give money to the administrative work in your local assembly. That one doesn't bring salvation. We have to do it, but it doesn't bring salvation. And it is not in all. It's the pain that Christ bore on the cross of Calvary that provides our peace, that provides our settlement in the mind, and that, that, that gives us the salvation of the Lord. That's why it says, Is it nothing to you, all ye that pass by, Behold and see if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow. As Jesus was going to the cross in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, I am sorrowful unto death to pay the price for your salvation. Any sorrow like my sorrow which is done unto me. When was the Lord has afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger? God is angry with the wicked every day. You spit on his face, God is angry with the wicked every day. Your blasphemous name, God is angry with the wicked every day. New Testament, and this is the condemnation that light has come, but men love darkness rather than light. God is angry with the wicked every day. Your blasphemy. You blaspheme his name. You call his name in vain. You lie against God. You lie on behalf of God. You are hypocritical. And God says he will judge every idle word. Every idle action. Every evil we do against our neighbor. God is angry with the wicked every day. As the anger of the Lord is coming, Christ intercepts that anger. And he became the shield against the anger. 
And instead, instead of the anger getting directly to you, it came to Christ. And you never think about it. You never say, thank you, Jesus. You never say, I love you, Jesus. You never say, I surrender to you, Jesus. Now that's what you have come to do. You have come to realize that the price, the pain of the cross was unbearable, but Christ bore it for you. And you want to come and say, Lord, I thank you. Because of what you have done, I surrender my life unto you. That's why it says, is it nothing to you? All ye that pass by, just pass by and look at Christ that suffered for you. You didn't stay in front of him and say, sorry, I'm the cause of the crucifixion. I turn, I repent, I'm the cause of your pain. I will not go that direction again. I believe in you because you love me so much. And I submit, I surrender unto you. Don't pass by anymore. Stay in front of Christ and say, Lord, I come, I come. He says, there's no sorrow like my sorrow. In the sorrow and the pain and the suffering, I bore for you. Your sin brought shame. I bore your shame. Your sin brought reproach. I bear your reproach. Your sin would have brought sorrow eternal, everlasting on you. He bore your sorrow. Because of that, took your sin, took your shame, took your suffering, took your reproach, took your damnation, took your eternal perdition. That's why you come and say, Lord, what can I do? I give my heart, I give my life unto you forever. It is then we come to Christ. He becomes our Savior. He becomes our Lord. That's why Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 says, But now in Christ. We're no more without Christ, but now in Christ. We're no more against Christ, but now in Christ. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes far off, are made near by the blood of Christ. Because he is our peace. Who has made both one. The same condition for the Jew is the same condition for the Gentile. The same pain he bore, the same price he paid, the same sacrifice he made, now brings the Jew and the Gentile near, and he makes us one, equal in the presence of the Lord. And he has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. And because all that is broken down, we have access to God. We can reach God through Christ, our mediator. Now we can reach God through Christ, our advocate. Now we can reach God through Christ, our justifier. And the moment we turn away from darkness and from sin, and we turn to the light of Christ, and we say, Lord, I believe, I receive, I take you as my Savior, now you are in Christ. Yeah. 
That's what you'll do tonight. I say that's what we will do tonight. Are you not going to do it? I said, are you not going to do it? Eh, when I said, eh, that's what we are going to do tonight, why don't you say yes and amen? I'm going to say it again. I'm giving you a chance to respond to Christ. That is what we are going to do tonight. Number one, alienation. Number two, atonement. And now that we are penitent and repentant and we come to Christ, He has made the atonement already. We just, we just collect, we just receive the result of that atonement from the Lord. Number three now, abundance of peace through uh, penitence and conversion. Abundance of peace. That's what you are going to have tonight. Peace in your soul. Peace in your spirit. Peace in your inner mind. Peace in your thoughts. Peace in your interactions. Peace in your family. Peace with your interactions with your neighbors. Now we don't behave as strangers anymore to our neighbors. We behave as friends. We behave as neighbors. We have good intention towards them. They have good intention toward us. Peace. Are you there? I said peace. That's what we're told in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15. I've been abolished in his flesh. The enmity. Even the law of commandments that is contained in ordinances. For to make in himself of twain one new man making peace. He now wants to make us and remake us. He wants to mold us and remold us. He wants to transform us and recreate us. He wants to pass through that bloodline of Jesus Christ. Number one, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Judgment will pass over you. Amen. Sickness will pass over you. Condemnation will pass over you. Eternal punishment will pass over you. Because the price you could not pay, Christ has paid the price for you. All the consequences of your bad habits and your bad, bad life, everything will pass over you. And Christ now erases and Christ now takes away all the sin and all the consequences of sin. And then sickness and disease, infirmity and iniquity, Weakness and wombling. Everything that shows that you're suffering from the consequence of sin in the world. Because, you know, before sin came to the world, there was no sickness. There was no suffering. There was no pain. There was no deformity. There was no incurable disease. It's sin that came, that dragged that long sickness and suffering. And now Christ has come. He has paid the whole price. Your sin taken away. 
and your sickness will be taken away. Tonight, tonight, because he has paid the price, because he has done the work, because everything there is to be done for your healing has been done. You, sh you should not be blind anymore. I will not be blind anymore. You will not be deaf or dumb anymore. I will not be dumb or deaf anymore. You should not be carrying extra tissue, uh, extra kind of swelling in your body. I will not carry any swelling, any stone in my body. I will not be walking about with backache. Pastor, straighten up. I have backache. Pastor, stand right. No, I cannot because I have this back pain. I will not carry back pain again. You feel like going to the restroom so that you can ease yourself. You know, the pain is there. The urine is stored there. You get there, nothing comes out. And then you try and try, nothing comes out. I will not be going to back with urinary problem anymore from tonight. He has come to take that problem away. Diabetes will vanish away. Ulcer will vanish away. Tuberculosis will vanish away. There's something there. They say it's as hard as stone. And for the first time, it wasn't paining you. But now it's bringing some pain. And if you go to check out, they say this is cancer. And since that time, you couldn't sleep at night. You couldn't sleep during the day. I came to tell you here tonight that Christ paid the price to take cancer away. From your body and from your life. Cancer, vanish away in Jesus' name. He has paid the price. He takes sin away. He takes sickness away. And somebody said, Pastor, sickness is not even my problem. Every good thing I try to do, Satan blocks my way. He appears to me in the dream. He tells me through some prophecies. And he says, I am your problem. You will never get out of the problem. At that time, when we didn't have Christ, Satan was running the show. But now Christ has come. Christ has come. He took a sledgehammer. And he broke the head of the devil for you. The devil is now on the ground. And go free. Because Christ has paid the price. And as you come to Christ today, in the past, you were helpless. Today, Satan will be helpless. Sickness will be helpless. Demonic spirit will be helpless. When I say go, he's helpless, he has to vanish away. Are you ready? Are you ready? The punishment of your sin taken away. Are you ready? New life coming to you. Are you ready? Salvation. 
Everybody shout salvation. salvation. Your salvation has come. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. You want to give your life to Christ. Remember, if you are without Christ, you'll be a foreigner to the blessings of God. You'll be hopeless and helpless. But it's when you come to Christ, I receive Christ as my Savior. I receive Christ as my Redeemer. I receive Christ as the breaker of every yoke in my life. That's why he's inviting you now. You are responding to Christ now. You're saying, yes, Lord, I come. Yes, Lord, I come. Yes, Lord, I come. Anyway, you are, raise up that hand there. I come to Christ. I leave all my, leave all my darkness behind. I leave all the yoke behind. I leave all my evil work behind. The confusion of mind I leave behind. The condemnation for sin I leave behind. Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. Raise up that hand. As you are raising up your hand, stand up wherever you are. I say, Lord, it's me. Lord, it's me. I've raised up my hand. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. I stand with conviction because I know he will save me tonight. Stand up wherever you are. I say, Lord, now I come to you. I'm going to pray for you and pray with you right now. As you are standing up, turn away from your sin. Turn away from your bad habit. Be sorry for what you've done. Because it's what you've done that caused sorrow for Christ, our Lord, our Savior. In a few sentences, tell the Lord where you're standing. And say, Lord, I am sorry for my evil. I've been passing by. It was nothing to me that was suffered for me. But now I come. Let's pray together now. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name for the freedom, for the forgiveness you offer everyone. Thank you, Lord, for giving us understanding that it was our sin that nailed you to the cross. We feel sorry for that. We feel the pain of our evil deeds. And I pray, Lord, you make everyone that comes to this realization to turn away from sin, to be penitent, and to repent of their sin in Jesus' name. You said, whosoever comes to you, you will no wise cast off. Forgive them, Lord. Set them free, Lord. Take the yoke and the burden of sin away from their lives now in Jesus' name. And let the Spirit of God bear witness in their hearts that their sins are forgiven. Grant them the possession of a new life. That everything that was at that time, at this time now, everything will change for the better. Grant your peace and your pardon to everyone. Here as well as online. Over the radio, over the television, everywhere. 
confirm the forgiveness, the salvation in every heart right now. Thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord, the forgiveness has been given. Praise the Lord, the salvation now is sure. Keep on standing. Our counselors will come to you there. I will call on our moderating overseer to help us during this time.